I was the best in what I did. A hacker. A thief. I got in, got out. No one got hurt. Until I discovered something I was never meant to see. That's when they came for me. But killed her. Now, I'm coming for them. How how long how long have we been being psyched up for Watch Dogs, Jason? Um, Seems like forever, since right? Since the Sega Genesis. Since I was in high school. Yes. I seem to remember them saying that since I was in middle school. That uh, Ubisoft was showing their very first before YouTube was a thing. I was watching it before on a real Ubisoft player. was a thing before Ubisoft. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you were you were getting the disc out of PC Magazine. That's right. It's been forever that they've been hyping up Watch Dogs and welcome everybody to Rage Select because now I know it's late. I'm sorry. One year anniversary E3 got backed up. We were busy. Deal with it. I know, but um, but it's time to review Watch Dogs. And uh, but before we start reviewing Watch Dogs, I want to ask you another one of these philosophical review questions. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Put my Buddha hat on. <laughs> okay. So, if a company spends millions of dollars and months and months hyping you up for a game, and that game doesn't entirely live up to the hype that they generated, should you hold them in a negative light because they have overhyped you for you? They have built up your expectations so much for something and then not delivered on. What they said that they were going to do. No, that just means their market. I mean, their marketing department didn't lie. Yeah, you know, they 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 told the truth, but they just got you all excited about it. They okay. did. Their, they did their job, and uh, I mean that that happens all the time. Because I got to tell you, the going into Watchdogs, like, I mean, I was I was leery, but even I was hyped up, and I know people out there who were just like. It was like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark when they saw Watch Dogs. It's just faces <laughs> melting. I was here. You and I were tied to that post. I was like, don't look at it, Jason. Don't look at it. <laughs> Why do I have to be Marion? Uh, it's because I'm the one who does the reviews around here. Fine. So. Um, but yeah, okay. So Watch Dogs. All right. For those of you who have been living in a sewer for the last hundred years, apparently. Say hi to Splinter. Yes. Uh, Watch Dogs is the latest kind of open world game by Ubisoft. I'm not going to go into my whole this was an Assassin's Creed game thing, but this was totally <laughs> going to be the Assassin's Creed game. It really looked like it. it, it when you play it, even more so than I'm that. I'm wondering if that's going to come out, uh, it's gonna, if that's going to be confirmed at any point. I don't think that anybody, I mean, I don't think that any sane person could look at that game and deny it. But in any case, this is a third person uh, open world game. It takes place in Chicago in modern day or near future ish. I mean, yeah. kind of. And there's nothing. There's no drone warfare or anything like that. There are drones, though. <laughs> Aren't there? Really? Not I'm thinking. Really. Of, oh no, I'm thinking of Infamous. You're thinking of yeah. Never else. mind. Um, and you take on the role of Aiden Pierce, yes. professional fixer slash hacker slash one of the single most boring protagonists I've ever met in my entire goddamn life. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna come back to that, but basically. In the beginning of the game, you play a, a fixer, hacker, criminal, and I'll explain the whole fixer. Basically, hackers are the ones that do all the, the computer shit, right? Like right. We saw the movie yes. Angelina Jolie and right. Billy Bob Thornton or whoever that guy Typey, is. Typey, Johnny Lee Miller. Cody Code. Um, and then fixers are the ones that go out and shoot at stuff and go out in the world and, and like they, they are, they're the IRL guys who go out in the sun yes. where the hackers are like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Um, so in the beginning of the game, and this is this is the first five minutes of the game, uh, Aiden is is doing some nefarious hacker shit, and there's some weird stuff that goes down, and he kind of gets caught. Uh, but the people that that catch him, they send this guy out to fuck his shit up, and it ends up causing a car accident that kills his niece, and then from there he decides to become. The vigilante, yes, phone um, Batman, yes, phone Batman in Chicago. Um, Basically, to try to track down the people that caused all this and exact his righteous revenge, um, and he does this with his iPhone 12 or whatever it is, because apparently this all takes place in Chicago, and apparently somebody in Chicago decided that it'd be a great idea to just wire all of Chicago up to the exact same operating system. Yes, the CTOS, which is apparently from the Assassin's Creed universe. Mm-hmm. Several people have told me. Um, that sounds very familiar. I haven't validated yet, but yeah, sure. So, it is. so essentially, every single thing in this entire world—well, a lot of things in this entire world—are all set up uh, on this one OS. And Aiden has a back door that he can get in and fuck shit up with. And see, the thing is that you know, there's some things that make sense, like you can raise and lower the blockers or the bridge or whatever on on the road. 
Then there are things like the grenades in a dude's pocket. Yeah. That it doesn't make sense that those things have Bluetooth on them <laughs> since they're just going to blow up. Like, <laughs> I mean, and I'm yeah. not even talking like an IED, like you stick it to a wall. Check out this grenade. It's right. got hands free. That's right. I synced it to my Beats headphones so I could hear the beeps <laughs> over my headphones. Um, so what you've got is essentially a game that is, is very much... Um, I would say mostly Assassin's Creed, but also kind of Grand Theft Auto, where you have a whole series of, you have the core story missions, right? You Mm -hmm. have the series of missions, and if you barrel through those, it's about 12 to 14 hours to beat the core game. Uh, But then you also have just a billion sub-events that are happening over the map. Like, if you're just walking down the street, you'll get this thing that's like, hey, there's a robbery that's probably going to go down over here. You should go stop it. And since you're the vigilante... Um, Shut up, Siri. Yeah, you can go over. You can watch this dude. And what's funny is that you'll have a, you'll have a guy, like, this, he's going to rob this other dude. But he'll keep looking behind him. If he sees you, then he'll be like, oh, no, I'm, I'll, rob him. <laughs> I'll rob him later. Yeah. Um, which usually when that happened, I just shoot him in the head anyway. I'm just like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pre-crime. That's right. But I'll come back to the various other stuff. Uh, but they're just fixer missions, gang hideouts, races. You've got the crimes in progress. You've got some voyeur stuff. You've got this six different subplots of tracking down weapons and human trafficking and uh, all this shit that just goes down constantly. And then you add in on top of that the multiplayer where you can have people that invade your game kind of Dark Souls style or you can go online and you can do multiplayer with other people. Um, In fact, I'd be willing to say this. Okay, so let's start with with Jeff is a a bitchy bitch. Um, There's too much. Like you're on your way to do a mission and it will pop up, hey, there's a crime in progress. And you go, all right, mark that. I'll come back to it later. And so you're continuing to drive or walk towards your mission, and then it's like, hey, there's a fixer mission over here. And you're just like, okay, uh, snooze. You know, like, <laughs> I got to keep going. And it just, it never, like, <laughs> it's like you keep getting notifications from your fantasy football league. Exactly, exactly. Like, the, the, pr- the main problem is just that, um, like, you remember in Grand Theft Auto 4, the way that your friends would keep calling you? Yes. That's kind of the same thing that's happening here with the radiant stuff that's happening in the world. And at a certain point, I wish that there was a way to just be like, stop. Because when I first started, like, I don't know how you play open world games, but for me, I'll, I'll put off the main storyline to do a lot of the sub-objectives so that I can get more powerful before I end up doing the main objectives. Right. I had to stop because it became clear to me that this was infinite. This was never going to stop happening. Because y- the thing is that it's not like when they tell you that there's a crime in progress that it's happening like directly on your route from point A to point B. It's happening like two blocks over in this direction. And when you go take care of that crime and you're running back to your A to B route, something else will pop up that's like three blocks in the opposite direction of where you were. This is how it feels to be Superman. Yes. Also, can I just say that I think there was some stuff in the I think there was some stuff in the the end credits where they called Aiden's character the Fox. Okay. But throughout the game, they uh, they might have been referring to somebody else. This might have been. I think there was somebody who hacked the actual Watch Dogs like development team that, that might have been that. But in the in the game, they refer to him as the Vigilante. This yeah. is a terrible superhero name. <laughs> like if he was called the Red Cucumber or like uh, Johnny Numbers or I don't that like was, you know that was my name in college. Jo- Red the Red Cucumber. Yeah, uh, I, had, I had to make money. Oh, well, it's just you know we have this this idea when you're making somebody larger than life, right? And and just calling them the thing that they are. I mean, you know, even in Assassin's Creed, at least in Assassin's Creed Two, they would scream Assassino, Assassino, which was cool. Um, but with Aiden, they just call him uh, the vigilante, and I was kind of just like, you can come up with a better name for yourself. <laughs> like, he even had on his face, we missed it when we were playing it, but he even had the Night Attack logo <laughs> that was a little bit, like, skewed. It's Brian. That's right. Brian Brushwood is foam Batman, you guys. Um, so anyway, the main storyline basically consists of a, a series of different missions that you take on that... In all honesty, one of the biggest problems that I have with this game is that the what ends up being the core storyline is very small in comparison to what's going on around the main storyline. Like, this game, when you're walking down the street, you can just pull out your phone and you point it at anybody. You get a picture of them, you get their name, you get how much they make a year, and then apparently your hacker phone 
picks whatever the most embarrassing thing about them is to highlight. It's not that this person has mob ties. It's that they like to watch Cthulhu porn or mm-hmm. something. And it's it's a really, like, after a while, I was kind of creeped out by it. Because I was just <laughs> like, I don't need to know this. Or yeah. you Welcome to now. Well, <laughs> except for the fact that now, I mean, like, in social media and the way that we advertise ourselves, we usually tell people... I don't. You don't go on Facebook and go. I like to poop on people. That's what I like. Well, you don't. <laughs> you know, some of us we need to tell people. Uh, yeah, that about that's our true. predilections. Well, but then see, I there wonder was a- if Cleveland Steamer is taken as a Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> but see, here is the thing. Part of the, the conceit of the game is that he has this hacking stuff on a CTOS that is able to scan the lives of other people and basically detect when a crime is going to occur and point you to that direction so you can stop that crime. Right, but. You don't need to know that this person shops for internet pornography or is a member of a eugenics group or... Well, everybody's like, got to have a hobby. I, but I guess it's just that information. Okay, this was the first time, or maybe yeah. this is my... Juggalo. Oh, hang on, something came up. This is, <laughs> this is maybe my old man coming I gotta through, fix but I was just like, I don't want to know this information about other people. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I, I, like, if you were just like, here's a crime, go stop it. That's cool. This stuff, this looking into everybody's yeah. personal lives, it felt really gross. As it should. I think they meant it to. But see, then the thing is that they never address that never utilize in it. the plot at all. Mm. It's just a straight-up revenge story. And, um, and the problem with it being a straight-up revenge story... Okay, so I told you the layout, right? Aiden's uh, niece is dead, right? right. His nephew is... Um, voluntarily mute, won't talk to anybody except for his sister. Mm -hmm. His sister is a generic blonde. Yeah. And Aiden is like a very, he's very much a cipher. He's just kind of gravelly and he does blah, blah, blah. But his morality is very nebulous and unclear. He's not even really all that angry. Like when people do bad shit to him, he doesn't even really get super upset about it. He's more of the the cold fire burning of revenge, you know? But what that means is, you know, I look at this story and I go, like, if you had had the beginning, and instead of, and this is creepy, but they're video game people, all right? If the blonde woman had been his wife mm-hmm. and the, the niece had been his daughter, intrinsically, the stakes would have been higher right. for us as a player. We, yeah. we would have had more direct rage, right? And I understand, you know, it's his niece, it's his family still, right? But, um, you know, it's made very clear over the course of the plot that by going and being the vigilante, Aiden is a piece of shit. Because his family really needs him to be there yeah. during this time. And he is off shooting people in the face for mugging other people when this is this is the whole like wouldn't Bruce Wayne be better served be better serving Gotham with his money than <laughs> dressing up in Batman tights, right? Yeah. And so it kind of smacked to me a little bit like Assassin's Creed 4, where I was never able to make a very good connection with Aiden as a character. Like he's my avatar, but his struggle, his what he was doing... You, know, you don't care. Well, it seemed incredibly petty mm-hmm. when you had this much larger thing about about a, a thing about society with the surveillance society and the way that Chicago is, is the people who are exploiting you, that. You heard it here first. Being uh, bummed about a dead child is petty. <laughs> That's what Jeff said. I love Jason. I really like that you're able to boil down what I'm saying to the the barest essentials. Got to got to make sure that that doesn't fly <laughs> by anybody. Also, can can we talk about when you're walking down the street with your phone and you're messing with people, right? The main interaction that you have with other people on the street is stealing their money. Yes. You just hack their phone, and you take all the money that's in their bank account, and now it's yours. And you spend that money on weapons and, and fancy clothes and explosives. Um, and, okay, like, seriously, um, that kind of makes Aiden a piece of shit. Right? I want that <laughs> device where when it, like, you take a picture yeah. of someone, yeah. and it immediately... Does facial recognition Mm -hmm. and finds if they have any nudes on the internet. (laughs) That's CTOS 2.0, actually. Um, But but a lot of this stuff, I mean, it came off as like, okay, this guy's niece got killed, right? Uh, So he's going to go out and exact revenge. Do you really need to be stealing everybody's money in all (laughs) of Chicago to do this? Like, how many guns do you actually need to do this, this Aiden? Uh, Which actually. Switches over to another thing. Let's talk about the gunplay in this game for a moment. Uh, Aiden is very fragile. 
and he is not supposed to get into gun battles. Yet there are a number of times in this game where you re- really don't have any choice but mm-hmm. to get into gun battles. Yeah. And it's really frustrating because um, especially... Well, I'll come back to that. But it, it, like a lot of there are a bunch of different areas on the map where you will be given um you be given an objective to get like from here to get to this guy or knock this guy out or whatever and a lot of times you can do the you remember in the trailers how they had the whole um phone or the the camera jumping right so you hack a camera and you have control of this camera and then you point that at another camera you could jump to that camera and you could jump to camera to camera to camera yeah um that is a way big mechanic in this game but when you've done that, like let's say that you're in a you're in an area that's just a straight hallway, and at the end there's a guy that you have to knock out, not kill, but you have to go up and you have to punch him and knock him out. And there's a bunch of guys with machine guns in between you and him. Well, you can distract those guys momentarily, or you can disable their ability to call reinforcements, or you can blow up their Bluetooth grenades. But it's there aren't really very many tools for for doing a very pure stealth run. Like, right. Um, and it also Sometimes suffers... Sometimes it makes you violate its own ethos, I well, guess Well, it also say. suffers from this this idea that once you're seen, you have to run like entirely out of that area to to get them off of you and then mm-hmm. go back in. Um, so I- the thing is that... Well, it's pretty common uh, contravance. A, a little bit. It's just that... I don't know, like the the stealth aspects of it. It was like I like playing the game. I like playing stealth games, and I like playing stealth games where you do non lethal, right? And one of the issues that I have with this game is that Aiden has one non lethal move. It is the melee attack that you do with the circle button or the B button on the right. Xbox. You have to be right next to a person to do that, and then you take them down. There are no tasers. There are no like sleeping gas grenades. I mean, I, I think that there's. I don't even know if there's like straight smoke grenades, so you can get in there. And do that sort of thing. Um, I mean, you have like a little. You, there's a couple of tools you have. One of them is like a little noisemaker that you can throw that you can get guys to go to an area and then you can walk up behind them and knock them out. There's another one that you do that you can craft later on where you can cause a blackout that causes everything to power to go out. But that only really works at night. Yeah. Like it doesn't really work during the day. Yeah. Um, but there's no tranquilizer gun. There's no like tranquilizer sniper rifle. All of the 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 larger guns that have silencers on them are very expensive. So I ended up playing through most of the game with the default silenced handgun. Um, there's just not a lot of like halfway through the game I gave up because it just got to be frustrating trying to do this in a non lethal, subtle, no alarm type of way where I would just go until a dude saw me and then I would just fucking pull out a heavy machine gun and shoot every single person in the face. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> and that's not, I mean... The, You're the, like, I'm becoming Jason. Well, the thing is that it, when you look at the concept of this game, the concept of this game seemed to indicate that you can use the technology to manipulate the characters in the environment. Right. And there really isn't that much of that. Like, you can make a steam vent blow up or a transformer explode, but that just kills the guy. Yeah. You know? Um, I was thinking about it today, and I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be cool if you could have, like, I mean, with the other stuff that they've had, wouldn't it be cool if you had, like, a... Um, a quadcopter, right, that you could use to to get to um, cameras that you couldn't get to normally or to get guys to go over in this direction or like a remote control car or if you could call them and you could use like a certain amount of your little phone power to call them with an emergency call to make that guy go, oh, fuck, I got to leave, you know, to get out of your way. But you can't really do any of that. And it's one of the things that I think is frustrating about this game is that when they showed it, when they, a bunch of times when they showed it, they showed us using the blockers, they showed us using, like, steam vent explosions, they sh- showed us using, like, the little distraction stuff. And I think that the implication on that, and this is why I was asking you at the beginning, the implication of those items were that those were the beginning to mid-tier items. And that by the time you got to the end of the game, you were going to be able to do more. You were going to be able to upgrade to be able to do more bigger hack right. things. Like if you could remote hack, like you can remote open a car, right? When you start out the game, you bust open a car with your elbow and the alarm goes off. Later on, very early in the game, you get a thing where you can just boop, open the car with your phone and you get in there. But wouldn't it have been cool if you could use your phone to hack the car and then drive it into enemies or yes. or, or drive it over here and make it explode? And so that's that, a thing now. Right. But not in this game. Yeah. And so part of what I felt Part of one of my issues with this game was that I started to f- I, when I started to realize that like this was it. This is the set of tools yeah. you've got, and that's pretty much it. 
I was a little let down because I had expected with this whole the whole city is wired yeah. up, right, to get more as time goes on. Like if you could shut off a, a street light, right, in the in the nighttime and then have the cover of darkness to move from one place to another. Or if you could you know, you can make a car alarm go off, but like when you get into these big combat arenas, there's not a lot to interact with inside of them. I don't know. Um a lot of that's probably just me, but I I really felt like I was a little bit let down by the interaction with the environment. But then there's also other weird stuff like, you know, there's a whole set of missions in this game that basically involve tapping into people's apartments and watching them through their webcams and security cameras. Right. And for no other reason, I mean, the, the only thing that I can see is you're stealing their money and you're watching the little vignette before it kicks you out of the system, mm-hmm. right? But what you're doing is you're just you're just being a voyeur. You're not stopping crime. See, if you want if you want to put that in a game, go ahead and make that game. Let's make the voyeur game. It, you know, I would I would actually be if there was a whole subplot about how Aiden's hacking had made him like into a kind of creepy voyeur. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Just address it, right? Exactly. But the thing is that he. It's it's more like it's more like if you were a vigilante and you've got access to all these different areas of technology to show you what people are all about, you don't need to watch as somebody is proposing to his mannequin girlfriend on the couch for like two minutes. You could just go, "Is this a crime? This is not a crime. <laughs> go about your business," you know. And so, um, a lot of that stuff once again just felt really creepy to me. Um, so I didn't necessarily like the gunplay. Maybe gun he play. doesn't have Netflix. So Maybe he needs some way to amuse himself. Maybe. Um, oh, okay. Next, driving. I yeah. think everybody knows the driving in this game does not feel very good. Yeah. Uh, cars do not corner very well. They don't handle super well. They're very sluggish. Um, I actually found myself, as the game went on, uh, just using motorcycles. Because you could drive right down the middle of the street, right. and it was fine. And they were fast, right? Because uh, you can tr- quick travel around the map to various points, and you can also use the the elevated train in Chicago to get around. Um, <clears throat> but there are a lot of places like you spend a bunch of time in Pawnee outside of um, outside of Chicago, mm-hmm. and there there aren't elevated trains, and so you're just driving everywhere. Do you get to see Ron Swanson? I I looked. I really <laughs> did. I looked for any of the people from. I was. I go for an Ann Perkins. I go for a Jerry Gergich at that point. But um, son, I disagree with the surveillance lifestyle that you've adopted. <laughs> It'd be funny if you were able to find Ron Swanson's house and then you just died. He just walked out the front and shoots you in the face. Um, so the cars and and so once again the cars don't handle really well. And what this means is that it's kind of a pain in the ass to get around, which in an open world game is not something that you want to do. In fact, there's even a mechanic where you can click in the R3 stick and slow down time, like like um, you could in GTA V. Uh, with and you can do it in a car, or you can do it when you're fighting. And I usually used it when I was fighting to get some headshots. But you can do it in a car, but it never seems to kick in fast enough. And then when it puts you back into full speed, it seems to there's a delay that it was always. I always ended up crashing into something. Like, I tried to use it to make a hairpin turn, Mm -hmm. and then when I tried to get out of it, I just ended up plowing into the back of a semi, and it was (laughs) that was worthless. Um, So there's that, and that's not usually a big deal, except that there are some missions in the game that require you to either follow somebody and stop them or escape from the police. And I'll tell you what, man. Escaping from the police in, in Watch Dogs, it's a bitch. They're tenacious. It is a bitch. Like... They want you to escape the direct sight line of the cops and then hide and then do like um, in, what was it? Uh, was it Battlefield 3 where they had that little mini game with the car where you were hiding the car? Oh, it yeah. A, it's kind of like that where you're trying, to, you're trying to stay out of the sight lines of the cops and then get out of that area. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you go, okay, I've got like four cops behind me, right? And I've got a helicopter on me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to raise that bridge and fucking jump at Dukes of Hazard style. And then all yes. the cops stop, right? I'm going to turn around with slow-mo. I'm going to disable that helicopter. And then I'm going to go into a tunnel. Phew! Except then cops spawn directly in front of you. And they know exactly <laughs> where you are. So I found myself at a certain point. There's a there's an ability you get that'll let you blow up the steam vents under the road, and that's a really effective because it's just something in right in the middle of the road. You don't have to wait for a stoplight or a block or mm-hmm. anything. Um, so I started using that all the time. Well, that started killing cops, which then started fucking my reputation meter up. And I was like, well, "What do you want out of me, watchdogs?" <laughs> like it would have been nice if there was. I mean, the best way that I found to get rid of the cops was hit the blackout button, which is a consumable, and then just haul ass to the nearest tunnel as fast as you can. 
Um, so also when you're driving, if you take turns too quickly, uh, you will run over pedestrians, which also messes up your reputation level. So I find myself just not wanting to drive very much, which in an open world game is a real problem because you're driving all over the goddamn <laughs> yeah. place. So I had to hike. I had to hack the bus so I didn't have to pay any fare. Yeah, I mean I used the elevated train, but like I said, and I sat next to a guy who smelled like beef stew. That's right. Um, so outside of Aiden, there are some interesting characters in the game. You got an old hacker buddy that's in there. Um, you got your niece. There's a few other sub characters. There's one like rockabilly hacker dude, which is kind of a weird thing. Um, but, and there's a girl with a dragon tattoo, uh, just pretty much straight up. Um, but I will say this, I've, I spent a lot of time talking about things that I don't like, and I would like to say your fixer buddy, Jordy, your magical, mystical Asian, like suit wearing kind of puffed up oh, yeah. hair, yeah, dude, yeah. that guy, I wish I could have played the game as that guy. <laughs> he was so cool. Like he's so nonchalant. And he's all like, you guys are so uptight about all this. Like I was like, he's like the Nathan Drake of the watchdogs world. I would have much rather played the game <laughs> as him. It's um, like- uh, yeah, uh, Aiden, why don't you download this personality patch? <laughs> right. Um, as far as the, the look of the game went, I played on the PS4, and I think that looks fine. There's been some controversy that, for some reason, Ubisoft uh, turned off a bunch of flags for the PC version that are the ones they had turned on when they were doing their E3 demos that make it look way better, but oh. not even settings that you could turn on. But some hackers have found out ways to kick that back up. Huh. Uh, and nobody's really, or well, there's there's speculation as to why exactly they did that. <laughs> you mean conspiracy theories? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll go with speculation. Um, it looks fine on the PS4. It's no, like, I don't think it looks as good as just the trailer that we saw for GTA V or Wolfenstein. But, you know, Ubisoft, they know how to make a next-gen game. And yeah. it, looks, it looks decent enough. Um, it is, I mean, there are some people who are get very upset if what you see at the E3 stage show is not exactly what the game looks like. Right. And that is definitely what's happening here. Um, I played <coughs> the, Killzone 2. <coughs> I played the multiplayer, I think you mean Killzone 3. Was it Killzone 3 that was like that? Killzone 3, yeah. Was it Killzone 3? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, no, 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 you're right, it was Killzone 2. Um, so you've got the online with multiplayer, I found that to be kind of... I found it to be kind of dull, personally. I'm, I mean, you know, like, the thing is that what we're talking about here, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've said individually sounds nitpicky, but when you add it all up, it's like every piece sure. of this game yeah. has a little bit of a knock against it. Right. So it becomes a thing where you're like, well, if you're not really into the way that the combat functions, then why the fuck would you want to do team deathmatch with people, right? Or you can bring somebody into your game to try to stop you on this like race run, right? So they're bringing in cops and blowing up vents and trying to... You right. saw when we were doing yeah. the streaming. Um, but once again, what you get for that is you get these rewards that buff you a little bit, but nothing that ever really felt... That's one of the other things is there's a whole upgrade mechanic in this game, but the upgrade stuff that you get is kind of minor. Like you'll get, um, you know, hold more grenades, but you never get like have more body armor like wear body armor you right. know like you're always or 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 your life regenerates way faster like, i'm a hacker and you're dressed up like the black knight <laughs> full black plate also i gotta tell you uh i don't know if it's because ubisoft was french or what but like aiden has like 15 different like sub variants of the stupid shit that he's wearing and they're all basically the same stupid coat and the same stupid hoodie with a dumb hat <laughs> and some of them look really really d- like i bought every single one of them looking for one that was cool i was like these all look like garbage <laughs> why can't i just have like this is this is nitpicking and i am not counting as a score for any of this right but like why does he have to have the the jacket and the hat and the hoodie why can't i just have him in jeans and a t-shirt or a suit or maybe something? it's cold a, a it is Chicago. Why does he button every jacket like at the top and then leave it all open down at the Maybe bottom? Maybe he's like really serious about being in Never Nude. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I say that the, the story goes into some interesting places, but like I said, it's still just a revenge fantasy. That And, and they kind of tease at the end about the implications of CTOS and that whole thing. But it's not the focus. The focus is the revenge story, and that kind of bummed me out. There's also, you know, like GTA, they had a full radio that you could play anywhere in the game. Um, like two-thirds of the songs on there I thought were 
shit. Mm. Uh, so I would just turn the radio off the entire time, which meant that I played the game without music most of the most of the time. Um, you know, it, and that's that's kind of it. Um, it. It's not a bad game. It's just that we've seen open world games that I feel do open world better than this game. We've seen Ubisoft. Uh, games that talk about privacy and personal empowerment like the Assassin's Creed series that do that story better. I've seen protagonists that are more engaging than Aiden is. And so it's a good open world And it didn't really deliver on its hook, though. Well, it did. It's just that they didn't say... What they didn't tell you when they were showing you those gameplay demos was that was it. (laughs) This is everything. That was all of it. The whole game right Right. here. Like, you know what would have been really cool is if I could have hacked a a police helicopter and looked down on the city, you know? Or if you could have used your hacking powers, um, if you could have used citizens, right? If you could have found somebody with a criminal background and then maybe it turned them. Or I was even thinking, I mean, I, I'm sorry about the Assassin's Creed stuff, but I was thinking, like, you're the vigilante, right? You remember in Spider-Man and in uh, Assassin's Creed and a bunch of other games how you're the, uh, you're the vigilante and you are hated, right? Yeah. But as you do things in areas of the city, those areas, those boroughs will turn friendly to you and it's harder for you to build up. Uh, ire or get the police called on you or things like that. Sure. It would have been really cool to see something like that. If like, you know, because there were times in the game where there was a guy and he was like, had a gun and he was pointing it at the head of a person and my little meter said, he's going to shoot him. And I would run up and I would put one in the back of his, or I would just hit him and knock him down. And then like a bystander would call the police. (laughs) And I'd be like, well, now I've got to run up to you and grab your phone and throw it on the ground like a dick. Like, I'm, I'm, I just helped that. And it would have been nice if it would have, if it would have had that. Plus there's also this whole point in the game where you get kind of like a stronghold much like you do in Assassin's Creed, but you don't really upgrade it. You don't really use it for anything. It's not like, a, I mean, you, you start missions at it as a it's home just where base. you keep your creepy videos. Right. Uh, well, you, actually, yes. There's, uh. a, there's a thing you can walk up to that will give you access to the CTOS is apparently gathering intel on people so you can just watch all these creepy videos of people doing stuff. So, at the end of the day, it's not a bad game. It's just a lot of goddamn wasted potential and a lot of, of things that... I don't feel like we should have to put up with it in an open world game anymore. You know, GTA V showed us a very, very sophisticated open world um, that had a lot of, uh, like, the mini games in GTA V were more sparse. You were only required to do them, like, once or twice, and they tended to be a little bit more involved than what you're seeing here. This has that whole Assassin's Creed, you liberated this tower, now do it 12 more times. Uh, the exact yeah. same thing. Right. Um, or like in Far Cry 3. Right. Had that. Or you look at um, so like Saints Row 4 and you go, okay, well, Saints Row 4 was a perfect example of a power fantasy stretched, or, or infamous Second Son, about you, you have a lot, of, a lot more power than what's going on here. And I just felt like this game didn't really do either one of those things uh, hugely well. Well, you know it didn't make a big splash because nobody's talking about it. Yeah. And it's only been out for a few weeks. I actually had one of my one of our friends, one of our listeners, who contacted me, who told me that Watch Dogs was his Aliens Colonial Marines. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't think it's that bad, bro, but... Uh. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's a testament to, like, when we, were, when we were doing our setup for the one year and we were doing our E3 setup, right? And Watch Dogs was in my PlayStation. I had played, like, six or seven hours of it. And I had to kind of force myself to go back and play it because yeah, it took it, you a while. Because I just didn't have that like that l- that lust to finish the game right. like I did with something like GTA, where I'm just like I can't put it down, or even Infamous Second Son, where it was like I want to do this stuff and I want to finish the game. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm going to give this a three point five. That's still pretty good. I mean, it's, it's decent. It's better than average, uh, but it's higher than I thought you were going to do. Yeah. Well, for me, I think that everything that's not broken should kind of be at a three or or above right okay um so yeah i think it's fine and 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 honestly i want to go back to what i was saying at the beginning if this game had just come out and ubisoft had not spent two e3s and every other fucking month releasing gameplay videos and hyping me for it i probably would have liked it a lot uh, well not liked it a lot more but i probably wouldn't have had as much expectation to have been yeah. let down by, yeah, right? Yeah. But the fact is that I feel like in this case, their own marketing fucked them because That's their job, man. But it's but the thing is that if 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 you get like super hyped up for a mediocre product Can you market it too well? Right, exactly. Okay. Well, I don't even I don't even know anymore. It's an interesting concept. But if you'll excuse me, I now have to go 
uh, hack into all of the Rage Select user accounts and take a look at what they answered for what is the most embarrassing thing that you do with your life. Yes. <laughs> Where are they? This is huge. You got to walk away from this, man. Some things you can't walk away from. 